How realistic are the Elden Ring daggers? I'm going to start with the aptly named dagger. This one is really interesting to me because it looks a lot like the British Fairbairn Sykes fighting knife, which was really popular in World War II, predominantly for sentry removal. So they're off to a good start. Up next is the parrying dagger, which isn't representative of every parrying dagger. There are different designs. However, this one looks a lot like one that you can see in the Metropolitan Museum, the Met. Now, this one has a parrying ring, and I can't see that on this one. However, it might just be on the other side, and I only have one picture to work off of. But still pretty accurate. Now, the Misery Cord, which was a historic weapon. It's pretty much a stiletto, and it was used to and fallen knights who were mortally wounded or just as a grappling weapon against knights. It's really thin, so it can get into gaps in armor pretty well. Now the Great Knife, which is a stylized version of a knife, however, it looks a lot like a Bowie knife, and that is really interesting to me. So far, they're pulling from various different time periods and different cultures, and that's just really cool for a fantasy game. I really appreciate that. The Bloodstained Dagger is an improvised blade. It looks like it's just the blade with the tang and it's wrapped around. The blade profile kind of looks like a Japanese Tonto, and it was not uncommon to just remove the handle quickly, so that way you could tend to the blade, and they were often stored that way. So I can kind of imagine somebody just grabbing the blade but not the handle and then improvising something real quick in some improvised situation. The Erdsteel Dagger looks a lot like an Indo-Persian Qajar or Jambaya. It, they go by multiple names, but they have a similar profile. So, again, historically accurate. The Wakazashi, however, wasn't technically a dagger. It's more a short sword type thing. But, I mean, how technical do you want to get? There's no specific classification of short sword, so I guess it kind of works. Now I just want to point out right now that they're classifying these as daggers, and technically daggers are just a classification of knife that has two wedges, and some of these are just single-edged. And like the Celebrant Sickle, not really even edged at all. And this one doesn't really work as a sickle because you need to have a pulling motion to harvest things, and it just looks like it can pretty much thrust into things. Again, it looks like an improvised blade with bone. I mean, if that's like magic bone, then that's really cool, but otherwise, more an improvised thing. The ivory sickle is more of a sickle, and it looks like it could do some damage. It looks like harvesting equipment from some cultures, so it could be a weapon. The scorpion stinger is kind of hard to base things off of because we don't have scorpions that are this big in order to make daggers. You won't really be able to cut with it because it doesn't have an edge at all, and you could thrust, however, you couldn't really thrust too deeply because, you know, it gets wider and I'm pretty sure three-dimensionally larger. And I don't think an arachnid stinger would hold up to steel, however, you know, poison. I don't really know how the tang works on that, though. The Cinque Dia. This is another really interesting one because technically, according to the Oakshot typology, it's classified as a longsword. Which, you know, a lot of people disagree with because it's pretty short. However, that's how it is. These did exist, and historically, you know, they look like a clunky pizza blade. However, the reason behind that shape is when they're thrusting into something, it has a lot of surface area disrupting the meat. So a thrust with that is quite painful. The crystal knife looks a lot like an obsidian blade, which, you know, you could form into that. That's what we did in the Stone Age. So definitely possible. However, those obsidian and flint blades wouldn't really hold up to one-on-one -on -one combat with most things, at least that have armor and their own weapons, since stone can shatter pretty easily. However, if you have some magical unnamed crystal, then sure, they could work better. Normal Chris blades have the same wavy shape as the Glintstone Chris. However, I haven't seen any stylized in that same ornate pattern. So that's kind of interesting to me. They're taking something that exists in the real world and putting it in ornate wrappings that might make sense in the setting. I mean, that'd be pretty cool if they're adding their own unique thing to it. The Reduvia... I think this is the only one that I'm going to say no, it probably couldn't work at all. Maybe I just don't understand it, but looking at it doesn't look like it's functional. 
The Blade of Calling looks more like an elven Lord of the Rings weapon and does look like it would work. The Black Knife looks like a lot at first, however, it's really similar to African Kapinga and Mambele knives, which were throwing knives, and they were shaped that way so that way a point would land on your target no matter what edge actually hit the target. So looks weird, but rooted in history maybe?